Today I'd like to give you some insight as to how pickers go about forming chord melody arrangements on the mandolin. We'll show you how to build the concept from the ground up. The melodies can be quite complex with each melody note being supported by a chord. Take a look. When first trying to learn how to do this, it's best to pick a simple song, one with just a couple of chords and melody notes that are quarter notes or longer. So we'll start simple and add more complex steps as we go along. I've chosen the song Amazing Grace for purposes of our demonstration. That should be a melody that you're very familiar with, so as we add embellishments, you'll always be able to keep the melody in mind. It will be presented in the key of G, so as suggested, there will just be three simple chords, G, C, and D, and the melody is made up of just quarter notes and half notes. Just a word of caution, we'll want to think of the melody in its simplest form as we begin, so if you're used to singing it with a lot of extra notes, let's scale it back as we begin. We can add those later. Take a second to familiarize yourself with this basic melody of the song, Remember that it is in 3-4 time and begins with a single pickup note on beat 3. This is step 1 in our process. Know the basic melody. Often in this style we'll just add a chord to beat 1 of each melody note that falls on the beat as there's a natural accent there. And the purpose of chord melody is to make your solo sound fuller. So the added accent on beat 1 certainly does that. The melody note is usually the note that is the highest pitch note in the group of notes you are playing. So you'll need to know the names of the notes that are within each of the chords that we'll face. So here are the notes for G, C, and D. To begin after playing our open D as a pickup note, the first note that we'll want to harmonize is this G note on string three. And since we want it to be the highest note, we only have the option of adding a note on string four. So we could add either a G, B, or D note. And I've chosen to play the fourth fret B as I do that. The melody moves to string two in the next measure of G. So we're at the second fret, the B note. So we have the option of adding notes on both strings three and four. So I'm going to keep the two I had before and just add that. The reason this note is in parentheses, you can just play the two highest notes. That would give you a double stop. This gives you more of a full chord. Try experimenting with other notes that are part of the G chord. Keep in mind you still want to keep this as your melody note. The melody moves back to this third string G note as the C chord comes in. So it would seem like your only possibility of adding notes that belong to a C chord on string 4 are the G or the C that are right down here. But actually there's an E up here, so with a little shift of position we can get a double stop that looks like this. So at this point I'm going to skip ahead and just look at the three most challenging parts that remain to give us a complete solo and then we'll play the complete solo. Keep in mind if you're a more advanced player that we will add more embellishments after we get this basic arrangement with added chords. Here is the fingering that I use as I get up to this fifth fret D note on string two during the D chord. I've got an A, F sharp, and D notes. If you can't get this complete G chord that's up at frets 5, 7, and 9, then 
Try your best to get the 5-9 double stop. The next to last measure in our arrangement presents a unique challenge because the melody note is B, but it's not part of a G chord. You're going to feel like you want to put G chord tones down with that. It's actually part of a D chord, which would need either F sharp or A or D notes. So I chose to put the F sharp note here. There's my double stop. But if your finger can make this stretch, you can also pick up this seventh fret. We will now perform the basic melody with added chord tones played on beat one of each measure. Your ears should agree that we are on our way to a much fuller sounding solo. Let's now take a look at how we can embellish our solo further. To do this, I encourage you to think of how a great singer might sing the song. Many of the quarter notes can turn into a couple of eighth notes or even a triplet. So the singing might go something like, Amazing Grace. And we'll want to imitate that on our mandolin. A way to add more color to your chord voicings is to transition to a seventh chord before changing chords. This will happen on the G to a G7 before it goes to a C chord. It also happens on the D to a D7 before it goes back to G. To get the D7, just take the D that you were on, lift your pinky, put down your second finger on the third fret, and this is not a melody note, but it adds a little flavor as you transition back to G. Toward the end, I add an Amen by adding a quick C, going back to the G double stop. Lastly, you may want to add a little tremolo somewhere along the way. So our solo has gone from step one to where we know the melody, just in its basic form, to step two where we added chords on beat one, and now finally step three where we add all these embellishments. Here now is our full chord melody arrangement as we will perform it complete with embellishments. <laughs> 